In round one of the Bilbao Masters, Hikaru Nakamura defeated Magnus Carlsen. And Carlsen's reward for his defeat was a round two pairing against Wei Yi, a 17 year old Chinese prodigy. Um, Carlsen had the black pieces, not easy. When they played in Vicon Zay earlier in the year, Carlsen also had black and showed Wei Yi a lot of respect, played very solidly as black and, and made a draw. But today it was rather different. Carlsen played the modern defence and they had a very sharp um, opening um, that Carlsen clearly understood very, very well. He uh, was following previous games for a long time and, um, well, they finally reached an end game. Very, very complicated and Carlsen started to take control, but it was still uh, extremely difficult. And, well, we joined the game after 38 moves and Carlsen played c3. So we've got an ending of, of rook and knight each. Um, and I think these end games are, well, in my opinion, the most difficult end games there are. Sometimes you have complicated knight end games you can transpose into. Sometimes rook end games also very difficult. And of course, you always have to watch out for a complete simplification and um, to going into a, a pawn end game. But also, this position is especially difficult because neither king has really much pawn cover and there's a dangerous pass pawn on c3 and all these factors add up to a tactically really rich position as we're about to find out so well here a plausible move for white might be to play b4 to bring this rook back into the game it's sidelined at the moment but this actually loses let's see how rook check so that makes way for the c-pawn, and now the rook goes behind, which you'd think, well, seems very logical, but now black wins with rook d4 check. King has to go back. And now we just need to drive this knight away with f6, and then rook d3 check. Flex the rook, and then you make a queen. So, well, that's typical of, of uh, tactics in this position. So. Wei Yi played king c5, good move. So, making sure there are no checks from the knight and no checks from the rook, and also preparing a counter attack up against black's king. For example, if black played rook takes pawn, we would like to scoop up as many pawns as possible. Then knight c6, and if c2, then suddenly the tables are turned and white can force checkmate on the next move. Incredible. Um, well, Carlson found a remarkable uh, defense to this. Knight d6. It looks very strange. But actually, this knight is spinning into this excellent square e4. And if this is taken, more tactics, the rook checks, and then the c-pawn rolls home. So, in this position, Wei Yi played knight c6, and, well, first of all, a check from Carlsen um, and king b5. And now, if rook d2, well, there's the same mating idea as we've just seen, followed by rook c7 or rook a8 mate. But there is an answer to this. Carlsen slipped away with the king. And then a check, and then king d6. So the king is, is relatively safe. It's funny how the kings are kind of circling around each other. Here, maybe white's best idea was to play knight b4. And after rook takes, rook takes f7. And well, if c2, this rook can come back to stop the pawn. And, well, it could be counterplay with the a-pawn. Um, for example, here an a4. Black is obviously better, but this is still very difficult to win. Instead, where you played rook a4, hitting the knight, perhaps he wants to check, and or perhaps rook c4. But after f5, suddenly it looked like Carlson 
was going to get the job done because everything is now protected. Knight is fantastic on e4, and it looks like black is just going to scoop pawns. Uh, so, for example, if rook c4, well, you could play rook g2, but actually probably the clearest is just to eliminate any source of counterplay by taking the a pawn, and then you can come back and take more. I mean, it's absolutely hopeless. But remarkably, Wei Yi found a way to continue here. He played king b6. Strange looking move. Um, but let's see what happens. Rook takes g2. Rook check. And now a4. And here Carlson played rook a2. Um, I'm not sure why he didn't play rook b2. This looks like a better move. Obviously, if a5, then we're going to take this pawn with check. And if b4, then a very nice move. We play rook d2, and suddenly this rook is in some trouble, because if rook c4... Well, I was going to say the rook is trapped. It's not quite trapped. You can still play knight a5, but actually you know, this knight blocks the pawn. Uh, there's no real counterplay, and you can just play f4, and so on. White won't be able to stop both of those. Um, another try after rook b2 is king c7. Still have to be really careful here, because if rook b3, then rook takes knight check, and knight d4, and tables have turned. But after king c7, we play a very cool move, king f6. And this should be good for black. After rook c4, you can play rook b3. Still very, very tricky. Um, I mean, there are lots of sidelines there. But Carson played rook a2. Uh, pawn came to a5, understandably, and only then came back to b2. Um, it's, it's all a bit baffling. Uh, and, well, here Wei Yi came up with a very tricky idea. He played king c7. Um, b4 must be the way to go. And I don't know, I mean, I've been looking at this position for a long time, and I'm still not sure whether this is a win for black. Um, we're going to play this same move, rook d2 again. And in this case, you don't need to play the rook to the side, you can just push the pawn. Now knight d6, the knight has to come back to eliminate the a pawn. And then we have this funny situation where... Now white's king is offside, and black's king goes on the rampage. Um, but knight c3, <laughs> still really complicated. King b4, knight b1. Well, in this position, it's clear that only black can win. Um, I flicked the pieces around a little bit, and on one occasion I managed to win with black, and another occasion I, I managed to draw with white by dragging my king back somehow. Um, and sacrificing the knight, but I mean, who knows whether this would be a win for black? Uh, it's very hard to say. <laughs> In any case, uh, Wei Yi played king c7, he suddenly got ambitious because it's the same trick as before. Um, if rook takes pawn, then once again we can take here and knight d4 check. And this could be tricky. Um, could be really tricky. But Carlsen found this move, knight c5. I mean, this, I think this is a very difficult move to see because the knight moves from its solid outpost and is sort of tempting these pawns forward, but actually doesn't work. For example, if b4, c2, that has to be prevented from queening, so rook c4, and now knight check, and we take on b4. No danger there. Uh, and if knight d8 check, 
rook c4. Well, let's take on b3 again, and we can take this one. And obviously, these pawns are going to win on the king side. So where he played after knight c5, he played rook c4, which at first glance looks very promising, because we can you know, try to eliminate this pawn, attacking both these. But here's Carlsen's idea, knight check, rook takes pawn, giving up the knight, and now king d5, <laughs> extraordinary. Forcing the rook out of the way. Well, if the rook if the rook goes away, um, this is this is winning. Well, we can take take on c6. Um, we can also play this, and this is winning. Uh, so way he played rook b4. Still more tactics actually. C2. And if that's taken, then you get a queen. And now it's very, very easy. So check. And there's there's nothing better for white. So Carlson got a queen, and this is very easy to finish. Um, so a nasty pin, and a6 impossible because of queen check. And queen check anyway. And at this point, where he had had enough. Uh, the queen is just too powerful, and this pawn is rolling home. My goodness, uh, I've spent um, hours today commentating on this game and analysing it afterwards, and I still haven't reached definite conclusion, and the players must just be shattered after that game. Really very, very difficult indeed. But Carlson pulled it out of the bag. Um, he said afterwards... Um, well, commenting on his game from yesterday, he said, I'm sort of used to playing poorly in the first round, and for once I got punished. Um, but he's come back very strongly, and, well, the other two games were drawn today, so that means Nakamura has one and a half, and then there's a pack on one point. Um, Karyakin against Geary today was a fascinating game. Uh, Karyakin made some very bold sacrifices, but uh, Giri held on to draw. Um, if only I had more time to look at that. But somebody else will have to do that. Thanks for watching.